We're going to be in Ecclesiastes this morning, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to go back Old Testament this morning and maybe get that volume turned. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is what we're going to be looking at, the first 13 verses in there. Before we get started, y'all know the drill, y'all know what we do every Sunday, we're going to do our spiritual breathing. All that junk you brought in, any of that stuff, any of the, the anything that's hindering you from being ministered to by God today, as you breathe out, you just ask Him to take that away. Just ask Him to, to, to just clear your heart, to clear your mind. Empty yourself of yourself, and as you breathe back in, ask Him to feed you with that perfect Holy Spirit and to minister to you in this place today. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, looking at the first 13 voice verses, Solomon says there, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, and a time to break down and a time to build up. And a, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, and a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, and a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is to give to God. Father, Again, I thank you for this opportunity to preach this morning, Lord. And Father, once again, I ask that I can decrease, you'll increase, Lord. Father, that you'll hide me behind your cross. Father, I just pray that you go out before me, preparing the hearts, preparing the minds of each and every person here, Lord. Father, if there's one person under my voice that doesn't have a real personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, Father, this morning, I pray that you reveal that to them. Father, I pray that you prick each of our hearts through the preaching of your word this morning, Lord. Father, show us where we need to change. Show us where we need to yield. Father, break us where we need to be broken. Father, once again, I just pray that you bind Satan. Lose your spirit in this group of people whom you love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this past year has been a good one, has it? It's been a lot different. We are in our first year of 2021. And 2020 is finally behind us. 2020 has been different, ain't it? It has definitely been different than any year I can remember. You know, we, as a church, we've been moved out of our comfort zone. We, we've, we've, had to, we've had to change some things, you know. There was a couple months we didn't have church inside the building. We, we were out there in the yard next to it. You know, I was preaching out of the back of a pickup. We were having drive-in services. We, we... There were some churches though, that shut down completely during that time. They didn't have church at all. We were fortunate enough to at least be able to do it from that, from, from that aspect, from that angle. You know, and, and then we take a look at some of the other stuff that's went on. You know, it, it's been one of the most disturbing political years we've had in a long time. And I, and I say that regardless of your political affiliation, there's been some things that, that have went on in the political realm that have just been disturbing. In this past year, you know, we've had an impeachment of a president. We, we've, we've had a heated and, and somewhat contested election. Peggy spoke about it a while ago. We don't even know yet if this is over with yet or not. You know, and I say that in all respect to all political affiliations, it has been a turmoil year there. Right. And then on top of that, in this church, you know, we've had a lot of personal situations in this church, just to name a few. You know, my wife, Cheryl. Her, her her wreck and, and her mother dying and, and Nathan scared with his with his liver and, and, and Diane scared with the with the spot they found on her breast. Joseph, he you know, him and all them other graduates, they almost didn't have a graduation this past year. Things were up in the air there for a while. It was all in turmoil. You know, Aaron's leg, that was something that come about that they had us all shook up. 
Stephen with his kidney stones. You know, we lost two members this past year. Two old teachers at that, Brother Tom and, and, and Sister Debbie. We lost both of them. And now we have people out with COVID right as we speak. And I'm probably missing a lot, a lot of stuff on that list that I just named. I, I'm sure I'm missing quite a bit. But it seems like as a church we had our cartloaders on it. As a congregation, most of us look back and think, I sure am glad 2020 is gone. I don't know about y'all, but I look back and say that. You know, I almost, not quite, I couldn't quite make myself do it, but I almost stayed up to midnight just to make sure it was gone. I just couldn't do it. I fell asleep before midnight. Uh, but in this passage that I just read today, Solomon gives us some wisdom on how to deal with those things. And, and also he gives us some wisdom on how to look for the future with these things. So that's what I want to do this morning. I want to dig in and see what one of the wisest men in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ himself has to say about these things. Now one of the first things that, that we'll notice that we'll see here with Solomon is he tells us there's a season for everything. He goes through this whole list. He says there's a season for all these things. He goes through a whole list of things, and some of them are good. You know, when a baby's born, we think of that as a good thing. You know, we, we, we look and when we laugh, that's a good thing. You know, when we dance, that can be a good thing. Um, you know, he goes through this list, and some of them are good, and some of them we dread. We dread to see some people dance. You know, we dread, we dread to see folks die, lose loved ones, and such as that. There are some of these things on this list that are not so appealing to us that, that we kind of dread. And just about all of us have experienced things on this list at least once. This list of things, when you look at it, you'll find out that most of us have experienced one, if not all, of these things on this list at some time or another. None of us are exempt. None of us whatsoever are exempt from these. But nonetheless, these things happen, and you know what? Life goes on. Have y'all noticed that? When your world seems like it's falling apart and everything just, everything seems like it's going on and you just can't handle it no more and you look around you, life just goes on and on. Everybody else just going in and things just keep going. You know, we, we, we think about the death of a loved one. You know, we think that's the end, but we look around and the end because life is going on with all those that are living. So all these things happen and life goes on. The world just keeps moving around us. And, and sometimes... These things make us ask this age-old question. Why do, good things, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, how many of us have asked that at some time or another, or heard it asked? Why do bad things happen to good people? Well, Solomon gives us a good answer to this later on in the same book. If we look at chapter 9, verse 11, he says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the, to the strong, nor bread to the right wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. Solomon says, you know why bad things happen to good people? For the same reason that good things happen to bad people. For the same reason that good things happen to good people. For the same reason that bad things happen to bad people. You hang around long enough and time and chance will happen to them all. It's just the way it is. And you know, modern examples, COVID. I mean, we, we're in the midst of all this. We can talk about it. It's not taboo or anything. We'll talk about it a little bit. Yeah, you know, when it first came out, we were told that the elderly and those with underlying health issues, those were, the, those, those were the ones that were really at risk. And we know they still are at risk. But it was almost made out like those were the only ones that had anything to worry about to start with. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was my impression when this all first started. But... What we've probably seen, if you're like me, what we've probably seen since last April is that this COVID doesn't appear to be prejudice. You know, we've seen young folks that's got sick with it. We've seen some of these, you know, we have a young man out right now. We've seen folks that appear to be otherwise healthy struggling with it. But we, we've seen folks repeatedly exposed to it and never contracted it. I have been, my wife and son had it at one point. My daughter's boyfriend has had it. And neither one of us, we've been tested four or five times a piece, and my wife, nor, or myself, nor my daughter have contracted it at this point. Now, I don't know. We might contract it next week. <laughs> but it seems like, you know, it seems like some people just aren't acceptable to it. 
I don't know the science behind that. I don't claim to know. But there's a lot of things. My point being, we don't really seem to know why these things happen to certain people and how they happen and everything, other than maybe just time and chance. Time and chance might be the answer to it. Some of us all, at some point, no matter how good we are, how careful we are, how holy we think we are, you know, you've met them guys, oh, I'm so close to God, there ain't nothing going to touch me. You know, so <laughs> other, other than the fact you're going to drown if you don't get your nose out of there in the rain. But, you know, we've met them that All of us, at some point, are going to have to walk through the fire while it seems like others are walking on the beach barefoot having a good time. And you know what? That happens vice versa, too. When yeah. things are good for you and things don't seem like they can get any better, there's somebody walking through the fire, right? right. At that moment. Right. It works vice versa. So when you're thinking, poor me, there's somebody else out there. We're going to face seasons of good and we're going to face seasons of bad in this life. Hang around long enough, it's going to happen. There's going to be seasons of good, there's going to be seasons of bad. So what do we do? Same thing I told y'all, you've heard me say a thousand times. We make a choice. We choose better or we choose bitter. That's pretty much what it is. We can choose better or we can choose bitter. Which brings me to my next point. When we're looking here at what Solomon has to say. These seasons that Solomon talks about, they open up tasks for God to use us in. Look at verse 10, what he says. He says, I have seen that God given tasks with which the sons of men are to be occupied. You know one of the cool things about it, this virus and its effect on the churches, on the churches in general? It has forced the churches to get outside of the four walls. It has forced us to get outside. It forced us to think outside the box. You couldn't look at Facebook for a while without seeing something to do with the church service. Could you turn on, you, you open up Facebook, and there was going to be something to do with the church service somewhere. Now, I wonder how many people heard the gospel because of this. Have y'all thought about that? How many people might have heard the gospel and might not have heard it otherwise because of us being forced to do things a little different? I heard a uh, I heard somebody talking about an old pastor said the man was up in his 80s and preaching for years and years. Pretty much of the mindset that he thought Facebook was the devil. Now, I know there's a lot of older folks and probably some younger folks who think that. And there's some truth in some of that. Amen. But uh, this old man, from what I understand, he was dead set against Facebook and social media just thought they were the devil. That is, until this COVID come about and the only way he could reach his people was to find a different platform to do it, and his granddaughter helped him to get into Facebook Live. He was able to reach more people through that platform than he ever had preaching here in the church. Mm -hmm. And God used that in a great and mighty way there. There's always tasks for us to do during these seasons. There's always a task for us. You know, after Hurricane Michael, God gave this church a task to feed in the community, didn't he? Yeah. And we, we got involved in some food ministry and some and it got teamed up with feeding the Gulf Coast and we have done these food giveaways. Here it is over two years later and we're still doing it. We're still doing it. God opened our eyes through that of a real need in our community that we've been able to reach out to our community is. And, and God's name has been glorified through it. I was telling you a while ago, people were asking, y'all are the same church that does the food giveaways, right? Yeah, we are. God's name is being glorified to it. Of all, you remember that list of people, personal situations we've been through as a church that I named to start with, the different things. God has had a task for all of us through it. Sometimes it was just to pray. So we certainly saw a lot of those prayers answered. I was thinking about that the other day. I knew three Bibles in there that were uncertain. Three biopsies amongst us, Nathan, Diane, and Cheryl. Those are three biopsies I can think of. That we didn't know what the results were. The doctors weren't sure what. They went in thinking there could be something here else. They wouldn't have done a biopsy, would they? Mm -hmm. If they would have thought everything was hunky-dory, they would have never done it to start with. But folks pray, and all three of them, this blows my mind when I really think about it, all three of those biopsies come back negative, clear. Right? God had a purpose in this. 
for us in that. And it was to pray. Sometimes it might have just been to encourage. Your task might have been to encourage. When my mother-in-law died, I'm telling you, there's a lot of y'all showed up to the viewing. Some of y'all come to the funeral. Just about everybody reached out to us in one way or another. But I'm going to tell you, it didn't just encourage Cheryl and I and the kids. My father-in-law made the comment. He said, y'all got, got a big following, don't you? you no, know, we just got a lot of people that love us in the Lord. You know, it made an impression on him. It encouraged him. <clears throat> so you were an encouragement. That was part of your task. Sometimes it's to show up and build around. I know Aaron appreciated that. I know that from experience. I know he had to appreciate it because I've been in his situation. And I don't know how I got in the house if I wouldn't have that ramp built. And I'm sure Aaron appreciates it. And we've had conversations about it. I know he appreciates it. My point being, there's always a task force in these seasons. And let me say this. Let me point this out. Be careful when God gives you that task of saying, this just isn't my calling. You ever done that? I've done it. Well, that just ain't my calling. I ain't going to be a part of that. That just ain't my calling. Be very careful. Sometimes that's true. Other times, what really happens, we use it as an excuse to get out of things we don't necessarily like to do. Sometimes we just don't want to do it, so we use that, well, that ain't my calling, to do it, to not do it. I'm pretty sure I'm almost positive. Sister Peggy's calling is not to be a carpenter. She spent years teaching in the public school system, was a principal in the public school system. I'm pretty sure that was her calling. And it weren't to be a carpenter. But she was right there at Aaron's house with a drill in her hand and had a good time doing it. I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that Stephen, Stephen's not here today, but I'm pretty sure, I know Stephen, I know how he is about getting up and getting somewhere early. I'm pretty sure it's not his calling to get up at 6 o'clock. No, it's and not. And drive 45 minutes to be here. I get out from that one. Yeah. To be here by 7 o'clock to help unload the truck. But he's here anyway. And I'm going to tell you, I know for a fact, I know for a fact because I have tried it, it is not my calling to work with young people. I tried being a youth minister, and I found out it is not my calling to be a youth pastor. That was not my calling, but I'll tell you something. There's nothing. There's nothing. I'll go to camp. I'll drive the van. I'll go overseas with them. There is nothing I wouldn't do for these young people to help them grow in their love for the Lord and their love for His church. Amen. Amen. There is nothing I wouldn't do for them. It might not be my calling. I might not necessarily like all of it, but I'll do it. I'll do it for them. And I think most of us here have that same attitude. Sometimes we miss that task that God has given us simply because we do not want to. We don't want to. There's a lot of things I don't want to do. And I tell my kids this all the time. Just because you don't want to do it don't mean it don't need to be done. Very good. Yeah. Right. I don't want to take out the trash. If you let the trash pile up long enough, somebody's going to want to take it out. It's got to be done. When we do that, here's the kicker. Here's the thing we too often miss. You know who misses the blessing when we do that? Sure, you miss blessing somebody else. But the bigger blessing is the blessing that you receive. The one, the one that's given is receiving a blessing there. And you're missing out on your own blessing when you neglect to do these things. Acts 20, 35 says, I have shown mercy. I have shown you, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than receive. <clears throat> Marcus C. Lafayette was a French officer who provided <clears throat> invaluable assistance to George Washington and the struggling American army. After the war was over, he returned to France and resumed his life as a farmer of many estates. In 1783, the harvest was a terrible one, and there were many who suffered as a result. Lafayette's farms were unaffected by the devastating crop failures. One of his workers offered what seemed to be good advice to Lafayette. The bad harvest has raised the price of wheat. This is the time to sell. After thinking about the hungry peasants in the surrounding villages, Lafayette disagreed and said, No, this is the time to give. Man could have made a fortune, but he decided to give. 
is there to be seen to need around you. Now, that's talking in the physical. I understand that's talking in the physical realm. That illustration is that it can be said of the same as spiritual blessings. The phrase you can't give out, you can't outgive God. We talk about that a lot. You can't outgive God. That's not just your money. It's more than just your money. It's the spiritual things as well. He has a task for you. And now we got to search out what that task is. And when you hit one of those seasons, when you're in the middle of one of those seasons, and you are in a season now, whether it's a good season, a bad season, whatever it might be, maybe it's just a season where you're just coasting. I don't know. But you are in some kind of season of your life now. And God has a task for you in it. And our job now is to search out what that task is, grab hold of it, and watch God bless not only others, but you as well. God has a blessing for you through that task. And my last point, as we look at these words of Solomon, celebrate the things that God does and quit complaining when it doesn't work out your way. Is that one enough? Does that make it one enough? Celebrate the things God does and quit complaining when it doesn't work out your way. Look at verses 12 and 13 there. He says, I know, that, I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and do good in their life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. <clears throat> y'all, I know y'all hear me bragging about the church all the time. I, I like to brag about this church. And let me tell you, let me just go ahead and tell you this. I love this church, and I'm proud of this church. I am very proud of the things the church does. For a small church, we do a lot of things. I mean, we get, well, there's a lot of outreach kids out of this church. A church this size, we're probably running about half of what we generally do, or, or maybe even a little less today. But for a church this size, 500 and something shoe boxes. Sister Linda was talking about the church. She was in 300 average attendance. The most they ever did was 100 and something shoe boxes. That's something to celebrate. That's something to be proud of. For a church this size, I have lost count of how many nations that we have reached with the sewing ministry. I mean, they, these little dresses have helped take the gospel into so many different nations. For a church this size, we are helping support a missionary in Nigeria right now mm -hmm. that otherwise they might not be eating this month. For a church this size has been able to send missionaries from the church over into the Dominican Republic for the last several years. For a church this size, we baptized. This past year, COVID has, has, has done a number of things that haven't went like we wanted. But the year before that, remember, we baptized around 20 people, I believe it was. Wow. When we done the annual church in Portland. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around 20 people in a year's time. I mean, that's something to brag on God about. Amen. The things that God has done. I'm just, that's just a small list of what God has done through this little church. So, yeah, I love to brag about this church. I do. I'm proud of this church. I really am. I'm proud of what God's doing in it. But another reason I brag about the church is because I, I know how I am. And I have to celebrate the small things to keep my mind off the negative. Because I know... And if I go down that negative, if I start concentrating on that negative, my attitude is going to go right with it. My yeah, attitude right. is going to go negative as well. Yeah. Because it'd be easy for me to sit here and say, well, you know, old sister so-and-so, she did this, or she said this. And I can just sit there and concentrate on that, and I can just think about it. Or I can say, oh, them kids, they, they left a mess here and there. They, they did such and such. And I can get upset, and I can get steam bowling off my head just thinking about it. You know? And my attitude would go right there with it, and I would be negative. <clears throat> you know, I was a, I've been a supervisor. I, I've worked in road construction since I got out of high school. And I've been a supervisor in a supervisor type position since I was around 23, 24 years old. You know, a lot of it was hands on. Now I'm more of a management position. I'm not as connected with the guys in the field. But I was right there with them for a long time. One of the things that I've noticed. I, and I learned this pretty quick, is that as their supervisor, when my attitude stunk, their attitude stunk too. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, it was 
Hey, hey. So if I was out there and I had an attitude, them guys working with me, they had an attitude too. And boy, I get mad. I'm like, well, you got an attitude. Because you do. And we're mad because you are. We don't know why we're mad. You're mad. <laughs> you know? And, and you know, that's kind of simplifying the point. But that's the way it kind of went. I get upset. What well, are these guys' problems? Then I realize they're guys, these guys have got an attitude because I got an attitude. My point in that being, there's someone always looking up to you. There is someone looking up to you. Older folks, or those of you that are more advanced in years, as Zechariah said, <laughs> they might be one of these young people. They might be looking at you. Young people, I want to tell you all this. You'll be surprised at how many folks look at you. Amen. That's right. I do. <clears throat> You're more valuable to this church than you know you are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Some of us had this conversation yesterday. You're more valuable to this church than you really know you are. You are not, let me put this, let me make this clear to the rest of the church. You are not the future of this church. You are, you are integral, vital members of this church here and now. Amen. Here and now. And you, you're, people are looking at you. So when your attitude stinks, their attitude is going to start stinking too. Uh-oh. <laughs> Same with you older folks. When your attitude stinks, the younger folks. So the first thing we probably need to look at, when we look at some of these young people and say, what's wrong with them today? They say, what's wrong with me today? You know, people, when y'all look at old folks, and y'all say, what is wrong with them? They sure got their behind on their shoulders. <laughs> so, well, maybe it's because I got mine on my shoulders as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we keep feeding ourselves negative things, negativity is what's going to have net from us. Yeah. When we constantly feed ourselves negative things, Negative is what's going to come out of us. Mm -hmm. sure. But if we look for the good in someone or in something, we'll find ourselves with a totally different attitude. You said, but preacher, what about that person I just can't stand? You know, and we all got one of them. We all got somebody in our life that we just can't stand. We get around and it makes our behind one crochet bob wire. <laughs> we don't like them. We can't stand to be around them. We all, let's just be real here. We all got one of those at some point or another. You say, well, preacher, what about them? What do I do with them? You want the short of it? Pray for them. Start praying for them. I'm about to tell you something out of experience. Pray for them. Put them on your prayer list. Put them on your personal prayer list. And make a conscious, real effort to pray for them. Not one of these half-hearted ones. Make a real effort to pray for that person. That, that person that you can't stand the most. Pray for them. And pray. Now, now what we tend to do is we say, Lord, change that person. you got to change them where I can stand them. Don't just pray for their attitude to change. But pray for your attitude to change towards that person. Start praying that and watch what God does through that. I've seen this work time and time again in my own life. I have figured out when somebody's getting on my last nerve, when somebody's getting under my skin, what I need to do is put them on my prayer list. And I have seen God work this out. Time and time again. We might not ever be best buddies, but I'll have a different outlook on them. I'll have a different attitude towards them. And when you see God moving in that person's life or in your own life, you know what you need to do? Celebrate it. Celebrate it. Give God the glory. Say, praise Jesus. Look at what he's doing there. Look at what he's done. Not only is that person, look what he's done to me. I, I can look at him differently. I can look at him like Jesus looks at him for a change. I'm sure glad Jesus don't look at me with all my imperfections. Right. That Jesus don't look at my worst attitudes and my bad days. Give God your glory. Celebrate that. Stand up and testify to the church if you want to. We ain't had a good old-fashioned testimony service in a long time. Maybe it's due we have one. Due time we have one. But stand up and testify. God has done something. Hey, other folks want to hear it because it encourages them. Testify. Tell them how God has done it. You know, we always have a chance for prayer requests and praise reports. Stand up and testify. Tell them. <clears throat> There's a couple people here. Aaron Hill. He'll stand up. He'll testify in a heartbeat. I've heard him do it time and time again. 
And it encourages me. And there's others of you that do that as well. It's an encouragement to me to hear God moving in your life like that. 2020. 20, 2020 is behind us. 2020 is the past. It's had its challenges. It's had its seasons. You know what? I hate to tell you this. It's not over yet. 2021 will bring its own challenges. It's going to bring its own seasons. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're still ahead of us. The question is, what will we do with them? What will we do with them? We accept them and take the task and celebrate the things that God has, that God does in them? Or will we say, why me? Why me, Lord? Why me? And just ignore the task and bask in our own bitterness. Mm -hmm. Choice is ours. Choice is ours. I read this quote. I'm going to close it out. But I want to share with you this quote that I read yesterday. It just it hit me like a ton of bricks. And, and I love this. <clears throat> it says, God is in control. But he doesn't expect you to lean on a shovel and pray for a hole. Let that sink in for a minute. He doesn't expect you to lean on a shovel and pray for a hole. Let that sink in for a minute. There's some truth in that. I, I've used the expression, don't ask God to guide your steps if you're not willing to move your feet Basically, the same thing. You know, we all want things to change. We all want things to different. We're going to go into 2021, and people have already made, I don't make resolutions because I don't keep them, so what's the sense? I don't want to lie to myself. Right. Other. But a lot of us went into 2021, and we've already made these resolutions, we made these promises. And we're praying, God, do something. God, move here. Move in this situation. Well, God might be waiting on you to do something. Yeah. Yeah, we can pray to lose weight. God just ain't going to magically take it off of it. He expects you to do your part. We can pray to quit smoking or, or whatever it might be. Maybe it's another habit. God's not just going to magically say, here, and you're serious, they're going to disappear. He expects you to put them down and do something. Yeah. It, the ball's in our court. The ball's in our court. What are we going to do with it? So as we go into this new year, what's our attitude going to be like? What, what are we, how are we going to face the seasons that come with us? And are we going to be willing to celebrate the small things when God comes? If the nail comes up blaze, I'm going to keep it short and sweet this morning. If the nail comes up blaze, if you need to be up here, if you need to come up here and talk to God about anything, come talk to Him. But first, number one, biggest thing, don't go into 2021 without Jesus. This is our first Sunday of the new year. If you're going into 2021 without Jesus, you're just, you're going into it alone, and you're going into it with no future. No, you're going into it.